Hey there everybody, Skosha here with a video on Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, which is a game that I haven't really covered on this channel much, not for any real particular reason, I just think I've been pretty much whelmed by the game, like nothing has really blown my mind or, you know, given me any crushing disappointment or anything like that. You know, I, I think the game looks good, I think, you know, I've, I've no doubt it will be good. So the other day at Gamescom we got a whole new host of information for City of the Wolves including the reveal of My Shiranui which is obviously you know a massive deal in and of itself if you want my opinion on that. Uh, I think her redesign is fantastic. Yeah, that's all I can really say. She just looks great. I don't think I'll ever play her. I'm not going to suddenly be the biggest Mai fan on earth, but she looks really good. The more interesting stuff though is that we finally got the release date for the game which is April 24th uh, 2025 which is actually my birthday believe it or not. So uh, I might do a special birthday stream uh, for when the game comes out. Uh, I, I know you can pre-order it and get, you know, three days early, I think. Um, but, you know, I'm probably just going to leave it and just, you know, play the game on stream the day it comes out. Because, you know, it's my birthday, so, you know, you might as well make it a special one. But yeah, we also got the confirmation of the roster size. Uh, it is 17 characters in the base roster with five more as DLC. What's interesting, though, is that... The only option that you can actually buy for this game is the Special Edition, which, you know, kind of defeats the point of the name Special if it's the only version available. But the Special Edition comes with, the, obviously, the base game plus uh, Season 1. So, you know, everybody is getting Season 1. Like, there is no option to go, you know what, I just want the 17 base roster. No, so technically the roster is 22. It's just the other five we're not getting uh, day one. It will be spread out across the next year of the game. But yeah, that currently leaves us with six characters left to announce for the game. Uh, we have some idea on who some of them could be, but you know, I'll get into that as the video goes on. But yeah, that's pretty much just what this video is going to be. It's going to be me kind of just giving my thoughts and theories on where the rest of this roster could go. And maybe some, you know, dive into the DLC. I'm not going to talk too much about the DLC because I feel like that's, that's way more up in the air. Whereas, you know, the rest of this video, yeah, there's kind of specific character choices. I know, you know, it could be this character, it could be that character. But yeah, like I said, that's basically what this video is going to be. So, you know, without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So as I said just now, there are three characters that we actually do have a pretty good idea of who they could end up being out of these six characters left to announce for the base roster. And they are Hokudomaru, Gato, and Kane. And the evidence that actually like points us towards these characters being in the base roster has been around for quite a while now. Uh, I believe in one of the first trailers that SNK put out for City of the Wolves, there's a segment uh, where they kind of you just hear like voice clips of different characters, you know, as they go around this like map of Southtown. And uh, these voice clips are like pretty easily identifiable. Like a lot of them, if not all of them, are characters you know shouting their specific moves and super moves from you know the original Garo or like original Fatal Fury games. And so far, almost every character that you know you can hear or you can identify in this like section of the trailer uh, have been confirmed for the game. There is only three characters that haven't been confirmed yet, which is coincidentally Hokudomaru, Gato, and Kane. So just as a refresher, or for those that, you know, completely missed this and had no idea this has, you know, been there for so long now, I'm going to play the voice clips of these three characters saying their lines, and then I'm going to then cut to Garo, Mark of the Wolves, and play footage of these characters, you know, doing their super moves where they say the same line, you know, just to further prove that these are the same characters. <laughs> So I think that's as good as evidence as you can really get that these three characters are going to be in the game, especially when you look at the other list of characters that you can hear that have since been confirmed, like Mai. The only other real thing I can say, you know, at this point is uh, the thing that's most interesting about these three voice clips, and it's not so much the other two, like, I don't really have anything to say about Gato or Kane, like, they sound pretty much the same, but Hokudomaru is very interesting to me because he sounds a lot older than he does in the original game. <laughs> So unless SNK have gotten a new voice actor for Hokudomaru and they're just doing a naturally deeper tone, which is entirely possible, you know, don't get me wrong, I think they've changed a couple of the voice actors from Mark of the Wolves for this game. But the other side of it is I think there is a possibility that Hokudomaru has been aged up a bit. I mean, I think it's about two years between Mark of the Wolves and City of the Wolves, so... He should be about 16 by now. I, I think he's 14 in uh, Mark of the Wolves, which is always surprising to me because he looks and sounds way younger. I, I would honestly thought he was about eight, you know, like 10 or eight years old. But yeah, I think there's a real chance that they have aged up Hokudomaru. Like I'm expecting somewhat of a 
fairly drastic redesign. Like, obviously, I think he'll still be like, easily identifiable as like, oh, this is Hokudumaru, but I think he will be a little bit older, like maybe a little bit taller. So, you know, that's quite interesting. I'm definitely kind of at, like at this point in terms of like the characters we know are coming. I definitely think Hokudumaru is the one I'm the most interested in seeing out of him, Gato and Kane. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it for those three. There isn't really much else I can say. I mean, Gato I think was obvious. He's always been a very popular character. Um, yeah, I think story wise, I think where he left off in Mark of the Wolves, uh, I think he's blind now. So you know, maybe Gato will be blind in this game. Maybe he'll have his eyes closed, or you know, maybe he'll have a bandage over his eyes. Maybe some Kenshi type thing from Mortal Kombat going on. That'd be fun. Obviously not fun for him, but just you know, in terms of just shaking up the character and the design a bit. Uh, Kane is Kane. I'm not expecting anything, you know, terribly drastically different with him. Uh, I'm still very hyped to see him. I don't know why, but Kane has always been one of those characters where... I don't know, I, I don't know if anybody else has this, but there are some fighting game characters, I feel, where you just look at them and you think, you're never coming back. And, I, you know, I don't know why Kane was always that character to me where I just was like, I'm, I'm probably never seeing you again. But, you know, he's more than likely back at this point. I mean, obviously, he was in the first poster that they revealed when they first announced that they were making a new Fatal Fury game. He was there... Uh, behind Rock and uh, also Billy was there who you know obviously Billy's being confirmed now so you know just further confirmation really that you know Kane is likely coming back alongside Hokudumaru and Gato but yeah that's all I can really say about these three uh, the more kind of deeper like, topic for this video is going to be the next three characters who we are going to start covering now so with half of the remaining characters pretty much confirmed at this point, uh, we're only left with three characters that we actually have no idea who they could you know, possibly be. Now, uh, there's going to be three main theories that I'm going to be presenting here as for who I think these three characters could be. Some of them are going to dip into DLC territory in terms of like, if this option doesn't pan out, then, you know, these characters could still end up as DLC. So, you know, I don't think any of these characters are going to be flat out like you will not see them in the game. I think... Pretty much almost all of them will likely be in the game at some point, whether it's in this season, in the base roster, or a future DLC season. But my first theory I'm going to start with is kind of the one that I personally think is the most likely, just for my own kind of like to lower my own expectations. And uh, I'm saying that because uh, in this theory, the three characters left that I think, you know, could be in the base roster for City of the Wolves, I think could be Andy Bogard, Joe Higashi, and a new character. Now this is probably the most obvious one in kind of like retrospect when I kind of like look back on everything in this game. But you know, I'll kind of get into it in my theories and my reasonings for the other, you know, theories as well, not just this one. But in terms of Andy and Joe, there's two main reasons why I think that they are probably, you know, going to end up being at least two of the three characters left to make it into the game. And reason one is because, you know, they have always been, you know, two thirds of the main trio of the entire Fatal Fury series. Like it has always been Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, Joe Higashi. Like they've always been the main characters of the series uh, outside of Goro. They've been in every Fatal Fury game. Uh, they make up the key Fatal Fury team in King of Fighters, uh, except for, you know, a couple of games where, you know, one was missing and then the other was missing. So, you know, they are pretty much staples of the series at this point. And given we've got, like, Billy and Mai back, like, clearly they are slowly incorporating a lot of the Fatal Fury cast that missed Garou Mark of the Wolves. And the other reason is because they were on the second poster that SNK released for City of the Wolves, which had Terry... And obviously he had Andy and he had Joe in the back. So given the other poster had Rock, Kane and Billy on it. And all three of those characters are either outright confirmed or more than likely confirmed. You know, it's it's a good sign for Joe and Andy. I think, you know, to me, this theory just makes the most sense. And obviously the new character is because, I don't know, we've only really got two characters that are new in this game. And which is Preacher and uh, Vox Reaper. And to me, I, know, I just don't think it's likely that those will be the only new characters we get like I, I would be very surprised personally if we only get two new characters in this game I think that's entirely possible but to me I just find it unlikely personally as for who the new character could be I mean the sky's the limit when it comes to new characters I, I mean it's pretty much impossible really to kind of like predict like what concept the fighting game company or the fighting game developers are going to come up with as a new character like i mean if you put a gun to my head i would have never been able to go like oh yeah street Fighter 6 is gonna have a ballerina gold medalist you know as a new character if i had to guess though then maybe it could be rock's mother because obviously she has been teased to still be alive and you know i kind of doubt it but she could be the main villain of the game like she could be the, the final boss rather um, she could be the main villain i don't know but, you know, I think if they do another new character, I think that would make sense. I think as well that helps a lot because I think this game could do with, like, a couple more female characters. Uh, I think we will get a lot more in DLC. Like, I could see, you know, 
uh, Blue Mary and um, Ling Zhang Fei as you know possible DLC characters for this game. But for now, like we only really have four, so I think you know five, five to six would be good. But uh, I think there's only really like room for one more. But yeah, I think Rock's mother slash like Kane's sister. I think that would be an interesting one. I would. Uh, I, I know she has a name, but I can't think of it. It's like Maria or Bury or something like that. But yeah, I think she would be interesting, and I wouldn't mind seeing that happen. But yeah, that's this theory pretty much. I think it's going to be Andy, Joe, and the new character. Um, there is always the chance that Andy and Joe are DLC, like they're part of the season one that comes with the game. I think people would probably be a bit pissed off with that in terms of like you know like why am I having to spend money on Andy and Joe, because God forbid, you know, a popular character gets held back for once, but you know, that's, a, that's an entirely different topic. But you know, maybe in a way that makes sense as to why they're releasing the game with the season pass, like there is no option to not get the season pass, so that, you know, people can't be upset if, you know, they find out like, oh, you know, there's no Andy and Joe, oh, but they're coming as DLC, like, oh, what, I've got to pay extra? No, the extra is included in the game's, you know, price, which is pretty good, I mean, $60 for, you know, a new fighting game by SNK plus like season one DLC is pretty good. Like I would have been happy to really pay $60 just, you know, just for the game with no DLC. But you know, the DLC being attached is a fantastic deal. So, you know, I think that's also, you know, fairly likely. That's uh, that's also an incredibly likely outcome is that, you know, they're including the DLC. So that like, that just makes it a easier pill for people to swallow. But yeah, that's the theory that I'm leaning towards the most at the moment. I think it just makes the most sense. Uh, obviously I'm not saying it's likely or anything, like who knows how it could go. But uh, this next theory is the one that I'm personally rooting for the most. So without further ado, we'll just get straight into it. So while the first theory was more focused on, you know, the roots of the Fail Fury series by choosing Joe and Andy, this one is more focused on Mark of the Wolves because there are only four characters left from Mark of the Wolves that have yet to be announced for this game, and they are Freeman, Kim Dong-hwan, Kim Jae-hoon, and Grant. Now for me, I know a lot of people kind of also think this, and I know some people might think otherwise. Personally, I'm going to just disclude Grant entirely from this list. I do not think Grant will ever be in this game. Who knows, you know, there's always a chance he could arrive sometime later. But I think for now, I think Vox Reaper pretty much takes the role of Grant. Uh, obviously, I haven't seen much of uh, Vox Reaper's gameplay to know if he you know, completely plays like Grant one-to-one. -one. I'm sure he has his own stuff in there. But yeah, I just, I don't see Grant, you know, being in this game. I think, I think given how close he was to Death's Door in, you know, in uh, Mark of the Wolves, and, you know, I, th I think Vox Reaper's bio mentions that, you know, Grant is still dying or has died already, possibly. But yeah, I just don't see Grant being in this game, personally speaking. Uh, so with that in mind, that leaves us with only three characters left from Mark of the Wolves, and you're probably seeing where this is going. So for me personally, Kim Jae-hoon is the character that I want in this game the most. He is, you know, one of my favourite Garo characters. He is my main in Mark of the Wolves, like just full stop. So obviously I am more, you know, rooting towards this theory in particular. There are reasons for and against this that I'll get into as to why I think this, this could happen and why I think this likely isn't happening. So if this theory ends up being right, then this pretty much completes the Garo Mark of the Wolves roster, obviously excluding Grant. Which, you know, would be very exciting. Uh, obviously, I, I speak a lot about, you know, uh, Street Fighter 3 and, you know, Third Strike and all that. Um, it would be very refreshing for me personally to see, you know, a major fighting game that is continuing on from, like, a time skip that, like, introduced a ton of new characters. It would very much make my day to see, you know, given that Street Fighter 6 has pretty much mostly ignored Street Fighter 3, you know, which is the game it, you know, finally moved on from. And then you have, you know, City of the Wolves, which is finally moving on from Mark of the Wolves. You know, it would just be very nice to see, you know, City of the Wolves have all those characters back. And I've no doubt that, you know, all these characters, excluding Grant probably, will be in the game eventually, which I'll get into in a second. But yeah, I just like this theory a lot because not only does it get me my main, you know, in Jae Hoon, but it also kind of just, it's just a nice contrast to see, like, SNK just not shying away from their new generation, like, their kind of, like, successor focused game or you know compared to capcom who is you know still continuing to just kind of shy away from that uh, but like i said that, that's a that's a wider topic for a different video you know I, I don't want to spend too much time going on about it but yeah the main reason why i kind of don't think this is going to happen is because i think freeman dong Juan, and jay hoon i think would be very good choices for dlc in all honesty you know as much as i would kind of hate to admit it uh, I, I just think it makes sense i mean these are three very popular characters uh, you know, people love Freeman, people love the Kim twins. I mean, there is always the chance that they do, you know, Kim Capuan instead of his sons. Uh, I think Kim could maybe turn up as DLC at some point. I think ultimately, though, I think three 
you know, Taekwondo practitioners is a bit much. But, you know, I think at the same time, I think, you know, obviously Kim is popular and I, I don't know. I think Kim could make it in the game eventually, but I, I wouldn't expect him until way later. But uh, the main reason why I think, you know, the Kim brothers are more likely than their father is because I, don't, I just think that SNK have shown that they're more than willing to respect Mark the Wolves, respect that cast, respect what that game tried to do. It has always kind of been this thing that they have always respected dearly they've always talked about with kof like they took so long to add rock to kof because they just they did it out of respect for the original mark of the wolves devs and you know i think that's great i think that's very commendable and obviously i think that is something you can see throughout this game you can see the respect uh i think the fact they have you know chosen to include so many of the Mark of the Wolves characters already is fantastic. I mean, if this was Capcom, like I said earlier, you would have gotten pretty much the entire Fatal Fury 1 cast. Like, Geese would have been resurrected from the dead and all that, which may still happen. You know, I don't want to kind of praise uh, SNK too much when that is something that could easily happen at any point. But, you know, it's just something that I've noticed with SNK is that they are very much respectful to the games uh, that they are kind of, you know, continuing on from. And... Yeah, I just, I think there is more of a chance, like me personally, I just think there is more of a chance that they would do the Kim Brothers before Kim Cap 1. But we'll have to see. But yeah, the main reason why I think that, you know, these three are going to be DLC, and you know, maybe not so much Freeman, I think Freeman could possibly be in the base roster, but I'm very much leaning towards the Kim Brothers being DLC, is because we've seen the release schedule for, you know, uh, Season 1, and the first two characters of season one both release in summer 2025, which is, you know, the implication there is that they are releasing on the same day at the same time. And to me, the only characters that make sense to release at the same time is Dong Hwan and Jae Hoon. And obviously, it could just as easily be Andy and Joe. I mean, I could very much see SNK going like, you know what? Here's the other two characters from the main Fatal Fury trio. They're the first two DLC characters they're releasing at the same time. You know, go nuts. That's also possible. But you know, like I said, I just think, I think the Kimbros and Freeman, I, I don't know, I just think they'd be more appealing as DLC, personally. I think more people would be kind of pissed at having to kind of like wait to get Andy and Joe. And yeah, like I said, uh, releasing those two characters at the same time to me, like it just screams like these are going to be, you know, the Kim twins or the Kim brothers, they're not twins, sorry. So, you know, um, that's kind of really it for this theory. Like, I, I think I think it, it could be Freeman, Kim Dong Wan, and Kim Jae Hoon as the last three characters. Like I said, though, I just don't really see it. I think the main reason why I think that they're going to be DLC is because it's mainly the um, the, the first two characters releasing at the same time. That to me just it, that just screams, you know, it's going to be Dong Wan and Jae Hoon. But we'll have to see. Like I said, it could just as easily be Andy and Joe. As a sort of like, hey, here's the two like really popular kind of characters you can, you know, here they are at the same time, enjoy. But uh, yeah, to me, that is definitely the main thing uh, why I lean towards, you know, this theory not really panning out. So I'll kind of brush through this last theory really quickly because honestly, there's, there's nothing really to talk about, to be honest. But the last theory that I had is, you know, it could just be three new characters. You know, it could just be as simple as that. Or it could be three characters from Fatal Fury in the past. It could be Blue Mary, Duck King, and, you know, Lawrence Blood, or, you know, Tung Fu Ru, or Hon Fu, or, you know, whoever, it, you know. But that's one of those things where it's harder to pin that down because it could really be anybody. I mean, like I said with the new character discussion earlier, it's almost impossible to kind of go, oh, okay, this is a character that I think SNK are going to create from scratch. Like, there's just no real way of knowing that. Uh, in terms of the kind of older Fatal Fury characters, it could be anybody, you know? But, you know, I think a character like Duck King would would sell a lot as DLC. I think a character like Blue Mary would sell a shit ton as DLC. And at the end of the day, SNK is a business. Uh, the game is a product they are trying to sell. And I think having like characters like that uh, as DLC will just make them more money in the end. It's not great. It's, you know, it's kind of sad, but that's just the reality of things. That's just that's just fighting games in the, in, you know... The live service era or the DLC era we've been in this state for so long now. It just is what it is. But yeah, I'm not too keen on this theory because I think three new characters is a lot. And I think saving three new characters for the end is a lot as well. I don't know, maybe, you know, my perception of new characters and their value in the eyes of the beholder is a bit, you know, skewed. Because, you know, I do like new characters, but I, al I almost always enjoy seeing returning characters come back more that's just me personally so yeah I'm, I'm not entirely you know sold on this theory i think the other two theories are much more uh believable have much more weight to them you know pros and cons for both 
But yeah, that's kind of it, really. I mean, that's kind of just what I, all I really wanted to talk about. I just kind of want to go, hey, here's where I think the roster could be going. Like I said about 20 times already, uh, I do definitely lean towards the first theory in terms of it being Andy, Joe, and a new character. I just think that's just the most likely. I think it's the safer option. I think saving Dong Juan, Freeman, and Jay Hoon for DLC just makes more sense uh, from a business you know, uh, standpoint, just from a kind of, uh, what's the word? Just from a kind of like feel good aspect in terms of just, you know, making people happy. Because that's the thing, I, I, you know, maybe SNK fans are different. I'm just entirely basing this off, you know, Street Fighter fans who spent five years crying about Guile being the second DLC character for Street Fighter V, you know, like it was some massive crime. Maybe, maybe people, maybe Fatal Fury fans don't really care if Andy and Joe are DLC. You know, it's entirely possible. But, you know, I just think to me, in my, in my mind, in my opinion, that just makes the most sense. Um, I've said a lot and I've felt a lot, you know, one thing I'm really tired of with fighting games, and this is specifically a me thing, like, I, this isn't a thing that I think is universal, is, um, I, I'm just getting sick, kind of, of just, like, a new fighting game coming out and the characters I like and the characters I play just not being there, uh, or just being sold as DLC way later. So, you know, for quite a while now, I've just kind of been like, you know what, if... Jay Hood and Dong Hwan aren't in the game day one, I'm not getting it, blah blah blah. I think them selling the, the season pass with the game, I think definitely eases a lot of my issues because it's like, you know, if they are DLC, if they are the first DLC characters, then, then I mean, that's just great, isn't it? I mean, I get the game and I get the season pass with it and then, you know, they'll come eventually. So, you know, we'll just have to see. Um, I do I do like the game. I, I do want to give it a go when it comes out. I mean... Like I said, it's, it's not a game I've been terribly excited for. Um, I've liked what I've seen, but, you know, I think a big a big factor of it is kind of just who these last three characters are, really. I mean, if it goes how I think it's going to go, where it's going to be Andy Joe and a new character, and then Dong Hwan and Jae Hoon are the first two characters released simultaneously, you know, then I would be more than happy with that. I think, you know, I would definitely buy the game. I would support it. Um... We'll just have to see. I mean, I, th I think another reason as well is because because uh, the game comes out on my birthday. Uh, I think that'd be a very fun birthday stream. So I may just pick up the game anyway, even if it's not confirmed that Jae Hoon and Dong Hwan, you know, aren't in yet. Because like I said, like way earlier in this video, I am pretty confident we are going to get, you know, every Mark of the Wolves character, probably Sans Grant, you know, in this game eventually. Would I like them all day one? Of course. Um, I've only ever really played Mark of the Wolves. I've not dabbled in, you know, Fatal Fury much at all um so you know i can't really say too much you know about those older characters i know you know characters that people love dearly i mean so many people i see people you know cry from the rooftops for rick stroud to come back you know i'm fine with rick stroud coming back i just i have no real relationship with that character i have no fondness for him i have no dislike of him i just don't really know much about him so you know um we'll just have to see how it goes but uh yeah, I'm definitely interested in the game. I will more than likely get it when it comes out. But yeah, I'll leave things here. I've waffled on for far too long yet again. Uh, I did not expect this video to go as long as it did, which I always do, but that's what happens when I don't have a script and I just ramble. But yeah, I'll just leave things here. Uh, thank you all for watching if you did all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. And uh, I don't know what's next for this channel and for me, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It'll probably be Terry in Mortal Kombat 1. Chaos Reigns will probably be the next things I'll start thinking about doing on this channel, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So uh, for now, thank you all for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you, and goodbye. We await your return, warrior.